So the uh, Wild Chimpanzee, so go, go briefly, Wild Chimpanzee Foundation. You, you, you stated that, uh, you know, the Chimpanzee found in Liberia. What's about them, you know, that, uh, that WCF is trying to uh, save them or? Yeah, so as in, 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 in West Africa, Liberia is the country with the second largest population after Guinea. Can you still hear me because I see the connection is not stable? Um, and um, so in Liberia, we have the largest population of chimpanzees that is living inside the forest. Um, so other places where uh, chimpanzees can live in the forest to the same extent because also Liberia is the country in West Africa which still has the most forest. And um, so what is interesting about the chimpanzee um, you may know they are our closest relatives uh, in the animal kingdom. So our, our genes are very, very similar, only small differences. And so chimpanzees have culture. And so the chimpanzees that have living in Liberia have a specific culture. They are using specific tools. Uh, they have specific behaviors that cannot be found anywhere else. And this is why scientists are also really interested in understanding the culture of the chimpanzees in Liberia and other countries. And um, well, so the, the chimpanzees in Liberia are special. They are highly threatened. Um, yeah, I mean, there are some of, of the tribes in Liberia who also are, have their beliefs about the chimpanzees, that it's their ancestors. And so it's, it's just a really special animal. Mm. Chimpanzees, is that important? So let's see, mm -hmm. well, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna send you a phone number to call yeah. when we get the, our phone lines connected. That way you can, uh, you can mute your, your audio and then talk, call us through the uh, phone line. All right, okay. But it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna take a while before we get that connected. Let me, let me try if, if I'm connecting via my phone, if it works a little bit better. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see if, if that can work better. I'm sorry for that. No, that, so that just... happens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you just joining us, this is focused on Liberia. We are discussing wildlife in Liberia. My guest is the country director for the Wild Chimpanzee Foundation in Liberia, Dr. Aneka Hillis. Dr. Hillis is joining us from the nation's capital, Monrovia, specifically in Concota. So is it a little bit better the connection? Uh, or still not? Okay. Oh, so you've joined with uh, the, the phone you said? No, I joined, uh, I just changed my connection here. So I'm just wondering if it's a little bit better now. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little better. Okay, let's try. Yeah, so 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 let let let's try. So talk about you know uh, a little background of yourself when you come to uh, this uh, wildlife areas. I, I saw in your profile that you started with uh, frogs, mm -hmm. and later you went to chimpanzee. I, yeah. I'm saying th these are all these are not pretty animals. Well, actually, they're not pretty, but this is, I mean, this is a, you know, the beauty lies in the eye of the person who is looking at uh, any of oh, okay. them, right? Someone <laughs> so, said, like, I mean, frogs or chimpanzee, why not zebras and uh, elephants? Okay, hold on. Um, so let's talk about your background, uh, how you got interested in frogs and then now chimpanzee and other mammals. Well, I mean, and the frogs was more like an accident. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to go to the field. I wanted to go, go out in the forest and study animals that are outside in, in the wild. And so it was uh, more like a coincidence. There was a research project that was focusing on frogs. And uh, that was in Thai National Park in Cote d'Ivoire. And when I started studying the frogs, I just fell in love with the forest. And um, also, the, you know, they are like, it's, it's, I mean, they're very interesting animals. You, you can't believe what frogs can do. They care about their babies. They, um, they have very interesting behaviors. Um, in, even in Liberia, you have, uh, for me, one of the most amazing amphibians, which is the nimba toad. 
which is like the dream of, of every person working on amphibians because so that toad lives uh, on top of the Nimba mountains uh, in less than square 12 square kilometers. This is the only place where it lives in the whole world and wow. it, the life cycle is completely adopted to the mountain uh, climate. So it has a gestation period of nine months. Yeah, you know, nine yeah. months like beings. Like yes. a, you're a human being. <laughs> yes, and the toad is like small like this. Yeah, just a couple of centimeters. But uh, it does not need water for reproduction. You know, normally when you have an amphibian, it will lay the eggs in the water. You have the tadpole, then you have the frog. But yeah. uh, they are all the development is inside the, the mother. Um, mm. It's like a like, uh, uh, toad giving birth to a, to a live toad. There is no tadpole and everything, but it's, it's yeah. really adopted to the top of the mountain. And uh, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, it's such an amazing animal. And um, yeah, but you know, it's just the beauty of nature and all the different varieties that you can find, um, which fa fascinates me. And then, um, you know, I wanted to do more for conservation before I was a little bit more research focused, but I really enjoyed working with uh, my um, colleagues in the various African countries. I enjoyed teaching and um, I really also enjoyed uh, doing projects where we can make contributions to the local communities and uh, make local communities participate in the in the protection and the management of ed of animals and of the forest. And so this is how I uh, went more and more into the conservation development area. I worked in Sierra Leone in a park where we also work with local community members and where I was the head of the research work. And now. Well, I'm, I made another step up and I'm a country director, but we have a lot, a lot of activities with the local communities. And for me, it is important that uh, conservation and development are seen as something that is working together. Because very often, uh, also here in Liberia, we are facing the challenge that uh, community members, but also even people in government, they believe that conservation, you know, protecting forests, protecting nature, cannot go in line with development. It cannot, it, so they think that if we want to protect the forest, there will not be any development in the communities around the forest, which is actually not true because mm -hmm. uh, it has been proven that uh, communities that are located around protected areas are much better off than communities that are far away from protected areas because uh, for the Wild Chimpanzee Foundation, but also, I mean, for all other conservation organizations in Liberia, and there are quite a few, and beyond what we are doing is that we are really working with the local communities. We are doing projects where they are involved, they are being employed, and uh, they, uh, we are doing livelihood projects we have with infrastructure. So, you know, it is this, this challenge to make sure that you can preserve nature, but at the same time, you can bring development to the communities. And this is mm -hmm. what we are doing. It's very, very fascinating, but also challenging. Right, it should be challenging. And we'll come to those challenges because I was born uh, right there in um, part of Sando County where we have the Sapo National Park. So I know what it means when uh, we have these rangers, we live on going to the forest to make farms, getting meat and all that, getting mm -hmm. wood. And someone tell you, say, don't do it. So how development that goes hand in hand, we'll, but we'll come to that later. I still want to understand a few basics before we move forward. You, when you, you earlier stated that Liberia has the, uh, I think the largest forest and also the dependencies found in Liberia are not found anywhere else. And we have the second population of chim. Is that in the world? Talk to me a little about that and what, you know, how this is, uh, how this interests you. And, and you also say that, that uh, we need to conserve these animals because chimp chimpanzees are our closer relatives and things like that. Just uh, talk to me a little bit more about that. Okay, I will start with the with the forest uh, uh, story. So um, the forest that is uh, that you find here in West Africa, um, in which is the forest area where Liberia is located, is called the Upper Guinea Forest. Uh, and this is uh, so compared to the lower Guinea forest, which is like in Central Africa, yeah, which starts in Cameroon. Um, and so this forest is completely unique because of the of the climate uh, changes in the past and the forest history. It has always it has been disconnected from the forest in Central Africa. 
And so there was a gap in between these forests, which means that the animals and plants, most of the animals and plants that you find here in, in West Africa, and in particular in Liberia, they are completely different from what you find in Central Africa. And this is why these Upper Guinean forests are ranked as one of the most important biodiversity hotspots of the world. Yeah, they are among the 20 most, 25 most important uh, global biodiversity hotspots. And uh, so this is already unique. But then when it comes to Liberia, uh, when you compare it to the other countries around Liberia, it is the only country that managed still to keep a larger forest cover. So right now, out of all the forests that still exists in West Africa, Liberia is holding 42%. And so for many of the species, you know, there are species like that really need the forest. Yeah, they cannot survive outside of the forest. So we have the forest elephant, we have leopard, we have pygmy hippo, which is also a really special animal that only occurs in four countries in the world. We have uh, many primate species any monkey species, we have different uh, forest antelopes that really can only survive in West Africa because of the Liberian forest. Because you see, when you look at, at Sierra Leone, Guinea, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, they have lost the majority of their forest cover. And so mm. this is why the world is really looking at Liberia, because Liberia ha has been able to preserve a lot of the forest still. Um, but, and, and also the Liberian government has committed to protect 30% of the remaining forests. Um, so there is uh, still more protected areas to be created. And so um, this is why there is such a high conservation interest in Liberia, because here we still have something to preserve. Now, when it comes to the animals, I explained already um, that the animals that you find here in the Liberian forest, they are really unique. Uh, some of them, they only occur in Liberia. Some of them occur also in the neighboring countries, but really to a much lower extent because they are linked to the forest. And the forest is not very much anymore outside of Liberia. Um, and you see every time when scientists are going to the forest, especially some scientists that are looking at smaller animals like insects, butterflies, maybe even like mice, like also frogs and so on. And, and even people who are studying plants, when they go to the Liberian forests, they always will find things that are completely new to science. So they are making new discover discoveries whenever they go to the forest in Liberia. They are finding new snakes, they are finding new frogs, they are even finding new trees. Yeah, so it is, it is just really a paradise. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a, a treasure that is immeasurable. And, and so there are so many more things to discover. And um, now when we come to the chimpanzee, um, as I explained, so we have here, here we have one of the four subspecies of the chimpanzee. So the chimpanzees only live in Africa and there are four different subtypes and we have the Western chimpanzee here. And for this animal, um, the largest population lives in Guinea, um, but there they are more in the savanna area. Um, and they are, you know, they, they are not living in the forest there, they're really more in the savanna area and they are, they are not bothered so much because they are the Fulani. They are, you know, they, because of their Muslim belief, they are not bothering the chimps. Um, but here in Liberia, we have the largest population that lives inside the forest. And this living inside the forest brings some culture, brings some behavior. Uh, you see, they're like cracking nuts with tools. They are using sticks to, to fish uh, ants. Uh, they're getting honey. They have a particular hunting behavior. Uh, so they have behaviors that are the really- Japanese, The Japanese are hunting? Yes, they, are, they have a culture. Yeah, and they, yes, they are hunting. They're hunting other, other monkeys. And so they have like hunting strategies. Uh, and this, I mean, there are scientists that have, uh, who have studied this. And so this is why it's so fascinating to look at uh, the chimpanzees that are here because they have, they, you know, it's like different tribes, different, yeah. for human beings, we also have different cultures, we have different traditions. And the same thing, we can observe it within uh, the chimpanzees. You see, they care about their young, they care about their dead. Um, so it's just really a very fascinating animals. And as I explained mm. uh, from the gen genetics, uh, they are very, they're the closest animals to human beings. Yeah. Mm. So, so Dr. Hello, you, you know, you describe the forest and it's like a paradise. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, like, I'm thinking, is this a good thing or bad thing? Because, and you earlier stated that uh, development and conservation can live side by side. 
but we want roads, we want airports, we want all these things. How can this exist with this big forest being conserved and we don't have to do anything there? Well, um, I mean, so first of all, uh, when you look at uh, money that is coming inside the country, um, I mean, you see, this is always the question I ask people who want to see mining, they want to see logging, uh, they want to see big, uh, big uh, commercial plantations. Mining has been here for many years. Logging yeah. has been there for many years. So well, if this is so good for Liberia, I'm asking you, why mm. is Liberia not much more developed? Hmm. So, yeah, that's, a, that's a tough, that's a tough question. But, and, what, <laughs> and what can forests do? Where mining has failed, what can forests give us? Yeah, exactly. So I'm coming to that now. So um, you see, um, you had this, this uh, word there, reducing emissions from forest degradation and, uh, for, and deforestation. Uh, and um, this is one funding scheme. So there are um, industrial countries that are paying money to preserve forests in, country, in developing countries because the industrial countries have lost all their, all their forests already, but yeah. they are, have huge emissions. Uh, so they are uh, putting a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The forest can absorb this. So the forest, like the forest in Liberia is helping to mitigate climate change. Um, and this is why uh, there are some funding schemes. For example, in Liberia, we have one funding scheme which is called Liberia Forest Sector Project, which is a big grant from the Norwegian government. Um, and this money is coming to Liberia because Liberia is preserving the forest. There are other, uh, other big uh, funding schemes that are coming to, to Liberia because Liberia is trying to protect nature. And um, you see, we have seen that nature is important for environmental, I mean, for stability. Um, mm. we, in countries where people are depleting nature, you see they have more issues with uh, erosion, with inundations. Uh, they don't have enough uh, areas to do farming because just the climate is not stable anymore. And even here, when you go to the communities and you discuss with the community members, I mean, they notice that if they cut down the forest next to the river, there's a yeah. problem. Things, uh, they, they have dropped. They don't, I mean, there are a lot of uh, consequences they can feel already at the local level when the forest is gone. You know, the air is not fresh. They don't have clean water. They don't have fertile soils. There is erosion. There is no protection from the wind and so on. So um, indeed, you know, healthy people live in a healthy environment. And I think yeah. this is something that really um, some of the government institutions are trying to promote here. And uh, what also internationally is, uh, is um, something that is recognized. And this is why um, countries like Liberia are really encouraged to invest in their nature. Because yeah. we have seen that taking away the nature is not benefiting Liberia. That yeah. said, of course, yeah, I think everyone recognizes the fact that Liberia needs roads. Uh, Liberia's communities, they need uh, hospitals, they need schools, they need water wells, they need uh, communication and everything. But again, you see like our organization, of course we cannot build roads, okay? But what we do, we help communities to construct water wells. We are rehabilitating bridges. We are rehabilitating schools and other, other things. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't, one does not, ex can, does not exclude the other, but you see without us, no one would do it in the area. Yeah. And I mean, when, we, when I go to, for example, the Grebo Grand National Park, which is in Grand Jede and River G counties. Yeah. Sorry, there is no development organization there that is building roads. There is no organization that is building hospitals, uh, water wells whatsoever. The government is not doing these things. So you see in many areas in Liberia, it is the conservation organizations that actually are filling the gap. Mm -hmm. And that we are also helping the communities to preserve the forest. And mm -hmm. this is another thing what often the communities don't realize. Conservation organizations, we help the communities to keep the forest and to benefit from the forest in perpetuity to have sustainability. But mm -hmm. if a company comes in, if a mining company comes in, they take what they can and then it's gone. I mean, the community suffer afterwards. So mm -hmm. This is why we are trying to develop um, programs, to develop schemes that can um, allow communities to benefit 
from the from the protected areas or from the forest in the long term. And this is also where now, for example, the ecotourism comes in because right. this is really something. And, of course, and, and, and we'll come yeah. to the ecotourism because yeah. that's one area I think we can benefit from. But when you're doing this thing as a conservation uh, group, what do you get? You know, it's like, okay, what, what is the incentive for the WCM to come here and do all this good stuff for us? <laughs> well, I, okay, you see, this, I think this is the difference between uh, conservationists and people doing business. I mean, I mean, uh, we are not doing it because we want to do any benefit, right? I mean, you see, we are receiving grants from uh, foundations, for example, from USAID or the German government or the European Union to implement these projects, right? Uh, I mean, there is, okay, we are receiving our salaries, but that's it. Uh, I mean, we are, you know, we are not, we are a charity organization. So it's not our, our aim to, to uh, make money with it. What we want to do is to make others benefit and to, to protect uh, conservation. And this is why, you see, I think many conservationists, I mean, we, as I said, I'm doing it with my whole heart because yeah. we, need to be passionate about it otherwise it is really challenging and difficult yeah. but uh, you see my whole I mean my team here we I have about uh, 30 staff members um, except from two, two other African uh, um, colleagues uh, all of them are Liberians and more and more we also have young women in the team which is really beneficial to our work yeah. and um, all of them they are really passionate about nature they love the forest they love working with the communities and uh, so, I mean, it's not what, about what we personally gain from it. It is what the uh, community, what uh, Liberia as a country can gain from it. I mean, for me, that is much more rewarding than, than anything else, right? Yeah, and when you see, you see the, in the eyes of the people doing this, you can see you know, that inner satisfaction that they get. Let's talk about the uh, your RED project the reducing emission, deforestation and forest degradation. Because you first stated about how important it is to conserve the forest because of mm -hmm. the benefits. And so there is this project in West Africa mainly about around the uh, Gola rainforest in Sierra Leone. So yeah. tell me about that project and what, what do you do and how does it benefit okay. us? Okay, I don't, I don't want to get too much into the detail, but I mean, to, to make it a little bit understandable, as I explained already, um, maybe some of you have already heard about carbon credits. So yeah. it's a scheme where, uh, for example, a developing country is preserving forest and you know the size of the forest. Um, and so a scientist can then calculate how much carbon dioxide is, uh, is, say, is inside this forest. So it, it is not going to, add to the atmosphere. It is not destroying the atmosphere. It's not causing any harm to, and it's not uh, contributing to climate change. So the, the carbon dioxide is captured inside the, the wood of the trees, okay? Yes. And uh, so you can calculate for a forest how many tons of carbon uh, are inside the trees. And so you can calculate the, the carbon credits. So, so you normally it's, it's, it's measured by tons. And so um, industrial countries can support such projects or they can direct or companies, individuals can buy these carbon credits. Sometimes when, for example, you now book a, a, a flight, you book an air ticket, at the yeah. end you see your carbon footprint, right? right. You're, you're seeing how much you are polluting uh, the environment, okay? How you, much you are polluting the atmosphere. And so you could, for example, calculate with your uh, you, how many cars you have in your family, um, what kind of machines you're using, uh, how many times you go on a holiday, you are using the airplane, you can calculate your carbon footprint. And so you can, there are schemes uh, where you can pay something which is benefit yeah. conservation projects. And oh, so okay. this is something that uh, happened in, in the Gola Rain, or is happening in the Gola Rainforest National Park in Sierra Leone. So um, they, uh, as, they know how much carbon credits they can sell. And so there are companies that can uh, buy a large uh, bu a bunch of carbon credits. So this is money that goes to the conservation project, that goes to the communities around the national park who are helping to protect the forest. 
Um, you, I, as an individual, can also go to a website and uh, can buy carbon credits. So you see some my family, I don't know if they like it or not, but I'm still doing it. Uh, I go to the website and I will buy them carbon credits. So for Christmas, I will give them their carbon credits. <laughs> and I will tell them, okay, now you have saved two tons of carbon or something. Yeah, but oh, then the wow. we go, we'll go directly to the conservation project. So it will go to the activities of the conservation project. It will uh, be used to pay for people working in the Gola Rainforest National Park. It will be used for community projects. And projects are typically, they have like a community development projects where communities can use, right. can use it to, to do mm -hmm. infrastructure, to pay scholarships for pupils, um, to do agricultural activities. Uh, so for example, in that area, they do a lot of cocoa farming, but they do like rainforest friendly cocoa farming. Um, you know, there are so many things that communities can do, which will benefit them. plant rice, pl plant Wonderful. cassava, groundnut and so on. Wonderful. Let, let's look at uh, other, I want to get to the parks in Liberia now yeah. and the different mm -hmm. areas where we have forests, we have animals. Uh, there is, you talk, you already talked about the, uh, the Sapo National Park, I know, then the, uh, you have the Grable, the Crown Grable Park, you have Gola, yes, you said you created, you have created three parks so far, so let's talk about these different parks and the areas in Liberia, and then okay. the animals that are found in each of those areas, if you don't mind. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay, so uh, right now there are five protected areas that exist in Liberia. Um, and so, I mean, I personally contributed to the creation of the, um, the Gola Forest National Park, which is in the Northwest and the Grebokran National Park in the Southeast. Um, so we have three national parks in Liberia. The first one was the Sapo National Park, which was created in 1983. And then the, later on, the Gola Forest and the Grebokran National Parks were created, but they are rather young. So Gola exists since, or was, was established in 2016 and the Grebokran National Park was gazetted in 2017. There are two more protected areas, which is the Lake Piso Multiple Use Reserve and the East Limba Nature Reserve. But besides this, um, I explained before that the Liberian government um, committed to protecting 30% of the remaining forest, which is about 1.5 million hectares of forest. Um, and so this is in the law. So the Liberian government has committed to it. Uh, there is a law from 20, 2006, the National Forestry Reform Law, and based on that, a uh, proposed protected area network was created, which is located in national, mainly in national forests. So these are forests that always have been earmarked for a specific purpose. It is not forests which were earmarked to be given to communities whatsoever. And so um, now more and more, uh, uh, organizations and the Forest Development Authority did uh, studies, they did feasibility studies to understand out of those areas which ones are those where we find the most uh, interesting animals, where we find those animals that need more protection, what are the priorities for conservation. And so based on these priorities, uh, the slowly more uh, protected areas shall be created so that the government is in line with the commitment, which also um, is bringing in some of those funding schemes because some of the funding that is coming into Liberia says, okay, you government, you committed to protect this forest. Only if you do it, you will get this money for, for development. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, the Liberian forests, um, I mean, they are unique. And uh, fortunately, there is still quite a bit of it. Um, so it is not that um, there are many animals that you will only find in one place. Uh, I mean, may maybe there are some, but we don't even know all of them. As I explained to you, whenever scientists are coming, they will find uh, species new to science that no one ever have, has described before. But uh, so you say, I mentioned already some of the key species that you have in Liberia. So we have uh, forest elephants, we have uh, pygmy hippos, which uh, you see the pygmy hippo, for example, only occurs in four countries in the world. So in Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Cote d'Ivoire. But in, in the other countries besides Liberia, 
uh, only, I mean, there are only very few left. We don't even know how many still exist in the wild. Maybe it will, maybe less than 2,000 by now. Um, we have leopards, we have the chimpanzee. Uh, there are around 11 primate species, so monkey species. You have really amazing birds yeah, that are also uh, almost endemic to Liberia. For example, there is one bird that is called the Gola Malimbe, uh, which is an endangered bird species. Um, and it's, uh, as the name says, it was discovered from Gola. So it still occurs across the border uh, with Sierra Leone in one other area in Guinea, um, but otherwise uh, very few areas where you can see them. Or well, there's also another um, bird that is called the uh, bare-headed rock fowl or the white-necked picatatus. It's, it's a, you see, these are, the, are birds for which people are traveling to the forest here to only come and see this bird. See because you bird. see, people that, are bird watchers. Yeah. And that brings us to the ecotourism, what we, we started earlier. Let, let's talk about yeah. that. Are people coming to Liberia right. to see those things? And uh, are you working with the uh, Liberia Bureau of Tourism to, for these things? Yeah, so um, especially, let's say, I would say now we are in the process of starting a lot of those initiatives. Um, so um, we are working with the Liberian National Tourism Association. So we are part of this association too, um, with the Ministry of Info Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, and also the Liberia Chamber of Commerce. Uh, all of those entities are really very much interested in promoting ecotourism in Liberia. And they are also donors um, who are interested in promoting ecotourism. So there is an ecotourism action plan, which was um, published by the Forestry Development Authority last year. And um, there are other funding schemes that are really targeting ecotourism activities in Liberia. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, so the bird, people who are interested in birds are a very good example because indeed they're coming to Liberia only to see a particular bird. But likewise, you see there are other groups and um, photographers who are interested in seeing certain things. And uh, I mean, this is one thing which I also am dreaming of a little bit still is to, to set up a proper research site in Liberia because um, there is not really any research center, any forest center where scientists can go and stay and do more research. And uh, when you look at uh, the, for example, at Cote d'Ivoire, in the Thai National Park, there is a, a research center is there and scientists are coming there for the whole year. Of course, they are paying to stay there. They are employing community members, similarly uh, across the border with Sierra Leone. And so this is really something where uh, community members can, be, can benefit as well because they will be trained as people working with the scientists. They will cook for the scientists. And anyway, so, I mean, there are so many more things to discover. But yeah, but let's get back to the proper ecotourism. Uh, so there is a new ecotourism coordination group. And um, so in this group, uh, uh, conservation organizations, government and the private sector are being brought together. Um, and so we can discuss what type of plans we have, how can we work together, maybe to develop some products together. Because you see for someone who is interested in, in uh, coming to Liberia, the person may want to spend some time at the beach, the person may want to stay somewhere in a nice hotel, but then the person also may want to go and see uh, some communities, some traditions, some cultural program, they will want to see the wildlife in the forest. So it is really the interesting thing to bring all these uh, different, very interesting aspects for Liberia together. And so mm -hmm. we, we, we started working together and uh, just a couple of weeks ago, on the 26th of uh, September, we celebrated the World Tourism Day. I was about to ask that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so actually the World Tourism Day is on the 27th of September, but it was celebrated on the 26th. And so um, there were, it was a really nice event, even though it was, there was a heavy rain. But, yeah. uh, you know, we had floats uh, there were from where people were showcasing uh, the wildlife, we had uh, wildlife, I mean, like... Did they bring, did they bring some live change? Did they bring some wild, <laughs> uh, live chimps? To, to we the, did not to... bring any live chimps, <laughs> but we had someone wearing a chimp costume. Oh. So uh, maybe some of the people who were not entirely sure were wondering if this is a real chimp or a, a person, <laughs> but it was a person. But also, yeah, we, we could not also not do that because, you know, we don't 
we don't want to uh, promote for people to see chimpanzees as pets because they are not pets, they are wild animals and it's it's uh, against the law to keep them as pets in Liberia but also uh, especially because of corona you know one one thing uh, yeah. the chimpanzees can get the same diseases as us and we can get diseases from the chimpanzees yeah. also life can give us diseases and we can give them diseases so we would not promote that but anyway we had this really nice event And, you know, it brought a lot of attention. People could see uh, what kind of attractions are visible in Liberia. There was a festival where the 15 counties presented cultural uh, dances and so on. And so this is something that is really inspiring. Um, I think now, obviously, the major market is still in country with the expats uh, who are working here, but they want to get out of Monrovia. They want to see something in the country. And so... This is one uh, area where I think the Liberian National Tourism Association wants to promote ecotourism yeah. more, but also the issue is we need to develop some infrastructure first. Right. Yeah, so here we come back to the infrastructure again. Obviously, in order to be able to host tourists, infrastructure development is necessary. And you see, we have some small funding to, uh, uh, to construct a couple of tourism lodges. Uh, we can train tour guides. Maybe another partner can do another thing. And so it is really fascinating how we all can join hands and can work together to, to bring development in the sector. Mm. So, so I don't know if you know this about the uh, ecotourism potential and what the challenges may be. You already talked about infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, okay, there are other challenges, okay? Of course, it starts with, uh, let's, okay, let's forget about Corona for now. Of course, yeah. that's a, a different story, yeah, because we, we, I mean, obviously it is around, it is serious. Uh, it's not a fake, it does exist. It is it's affecting many people very seriously. Fortunately for Liberia, yes, some people were affected, but uh, fortunately so far, you know, I think uh, the country managed quite well. But um I mean, it starts under, under normal conditions. Flights are too expensive. Vis the visa is too expensive. It is difficult to get the visa. Um, I mean, then we come to, you know, the, the hotels, they are too expensive. Uh, the roads are bad. Um, people, you see people have not really uh, received education on how to host tourists. Um, I mean, you see there are so many different levels where we can work together. But I mean, this is what I just explained. What is so great is that we have people from or people with different expertise coming from different sector. You see someone who's having a hotel in Monrovia, he may not know anything about the national park. He may not know anything about the wildlife, but this is why it's so good that now we can come together and we can have this platform where we can start uh, supporting each other and doing activities that are complementary. But mm. um, I that you know the Liberia um, Chamber of Commerce uh, it's on the agenda to improve uh, ecotourism and, and to really promote ecotourism so I think uh, some of those challenges that I mentioned they're actually working on it you know to make it easy for tourists to come inside the country sure. um, uh, and, and well support other activities um, yeah Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, we are in conversation with Dr. Anika Hillis. She's the uh, country director for Wild Chimpanzee Foundation operating in Liberia. Let's go into the Crown Gravel National Park. What do we have there? Yeah. The Gravel Crown National Park. The, the other way. Crown. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I mean, First we have all, all the... That's in Grand Jade and River G. That's the location, right? It's in Grand Jade and River G County. Uh, it's located directly at the border with Cote d'Ivoire. So one of the borders of the national park really uh, borders the Kavala River. And um, so um, we have, I mean, we have all the amazing animals that can occur in Liberia. So we do have forest elephants, we have leopards, we have pygmy hippos, we have plenty of different dica species. Of course, we have the uh, Western chimpanzee, We have uh, many amazing bird species and plant species, um, but it will not be a major tourist uh, destination in Liberia for a longer time because it is a very remote area. Um, you know, I mean, especially during the rainy season, uh, already getting to Zwedru is a challenge. Uh, our, our local office is in Zwedru, so we have a big, a big office in Zwedru. 
um, from where we're operating. And um, I mean, there are also no facilities yet to host any tourists in that area, but still we have all the animals. And what is sometimes happening is that uh, tourists who are at the Thai National Park in Cote d'Ivoire, where my organization, the Wild Chimpanzee Foundation, we are running an ecotourism project there since 10 years. And sometimes the tourists there, they want to come across to Liberia. And so maybe this is something that can happen more in the future. Um, but um, yeah, for now, uh, the animals are just there, um, more or less peaceful. We are having a program with community members, which is called the Community Eco Guard Program. So we are training community members in patrolling the forest. Uh, they are looking for wildlife signs, but also signs of illegal activities, right. because of course, even though it is a national park, there are still people who go for mining and for hunting inside the national park. Um, but the community members are really helping to, to educate people, to promote the conservation of the national park. And so we have, over the past years, we have seen that every year the number of illegal activities is reducing inside the National Park. And also this program is really bringing a lot of, um, of um, benefits to the communities, in particular to some young women. So we, again, over the past years, we have made a lot of effort to bring women into the program who are patrolling um, inside the forest. They are helping to educate other community members and uh, they are really making a great contribution um, to, to the Hello, are you there? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing wildlife in Liberia. My guest is Dr. Anika Hillas. She's the country director for Wild Chimpanzee Foundation. She's joining the us. Protection of the National Park. Um, but I mean, it brings a completely new. So oh. ah, okay. I, I, was, I was going to ask the question about uh, illegal activities in that area. Uh, people encroaching in the forest and tell me exactly mm -hmm. what's going on. The picture some people are painting is like, this is like wild, wild west. Too many bad things. And yeah. when people get there, they are, sometimes the uh, people are attacked and if possible, if not, you know, if possible, kill. What, what some of the activities going on there? Okay, well, so I think uh, your view is a little bit negative. <laughs> when, when, I posted, when I posted your picture, when I posted about this, that's the comment yeah. people people were making. They said, oh, oh too many bad uh, things going on there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, I have been there a few times. We have not really observed uh, such bad behavior. Um, I mean, it is, it is quite challenging, I must say. Um, people are a little bit special. Yes. Uh, but I mean, not only in Grand Jedi, we have, I mean, anyway. It's up to, to up to Liberians to judge what is, what is normal and what is not normal, right? I think everywhere you have some people who, who are different from others. Every human being is different. So I don't want to judge anyone, right? Um, but um, I mean, what we have seen, we have a very good collaboration with the local communities. And um, to be honest, um, a lot of those activities uh, that are being illegally done in, in the national parks. You see, it's the same for Sapo National Park, uh, which yeah. is uh, very close to Grey Uh It's not necessarily Liberians who are doing it. I mean, if you look at the uh, people who come from mining, we have observed that um, other nations are coming inside the country to do mining in Liberia. There are other people who are coming to do illegal farming in Liberia. Because, if they, for example, they pass through Cote d'Ivoire, and Cote d'Ivoire, there is no area left where they can do any farming, so they are crossing over to uh, Liberia. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, Liberians are involved in this as well. But I mean, of course, it is, you know, they, we are talking about extremely remote areas here. We are talking about uh, extreme poverty. People don't have many opportunities to improve their lives, right? Mm -hmm. This is why it is so important that there are organizations that are trying to work with the people, but also they're trying to work with the people in a way that is not just handing out money, but it's really to, to build capacity to ensure that uh, when we do livelihood projects, they are seeing the project as a business that can bring them income, even 
if we are not there anymore. So you see, we do like fish farming projects, we do beekeeping, we do cassava farming, we do rice farming, uh, but we also have environmental education activities. We have wildlife clubs in the schools. And so, um, I mean, I, don't, I would not call it the wild, wild west. Um, I mean, there are decent people there like anywhere else. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, again, I must say, especially the work with the women, uh, is very much rewarding. Um, we have seen in development very often that the involvement of women can actually ensure a more sustainable development and more successful projects because they're handling projects in a different way from men. Um, and so, um, yes, some illegal activities are happening, right. but uh, I would definitely not say that it is more than uh, in other places in Liberia, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, there, there were there were people in Grand Jira, they were forming groups. I spoke to some of them that uh, say, well, the actual the people are coming from uh, say Burkina Faso, yeah, Ivory Coast, and they were and they were operating illegally in the area. But the people themselves were selling to them because they are poor. So whatever money True. they were yeah. Yeah. They were organizing some uh, groups to kind of fight that. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it is. It, the, but the issue is, uh, if you are not really very much experienced, and you see, you maybe will believe what the people say. Yeah, they will say, "Okay, we are taking this in this part of your land. You will get half of the benefit of the income that is generating by a cocoa farm or whatever." But then, what we have observed that they go beyond the area they agreed on yeah. and so on. But, um, these things happen, yes, but it's good that um, some awareness is being raised about that. I mean, like, for example, last year we trained an amateur theater group from the communities to raise awareness about exactly this issue. Um, and so, I mean, it's good to give guidance to the people, but uh, of course, it's better to educate people than deciding for them, right? Because otherwise it will not uh, have any sustainable effect. Yeah, that, that, is, that is true. Let's talk about those endangered species and, and what are you doing to conserve them? Okay, well, I mean, <clears throat> there are a lot of, um, of uh, threatened species in Liberia. Um, and I mean, the, the mammal species that is the most threatened is the Western chimpanzee, which is because it is critically endangered. And critically endangered means that it is a species that uh, is close to extinction. So if nothing is being done for this species, um, the species will disappear from Earth forever. It will disappear from Liberia first, but then from the whole area where it occurs. Uh, excuse me. Um, but then we also have other highly threatened species um, like the pygmy hippo. I explained before that it only occurs in four countries and uh, the threshold of the population is still in Liberia. Um, we have um, many, many more threatened species. Mm -hmm. Um, which are also protected by international law, right? And you see some of the um, challenges, challenges are, of course, the, the bushmeat business in Liberia. Um, I mean, this is something we are actually um, working on at the national level. Um, so we, we supported the creation of a wildlife crime task force, which is hosted by the Forestry Development Authority, um, and they're working together with the Environmental Protection Agency, with the Transnational Organized Crime Unit of the Liberian National Police, with Interpol, with the Ministry of Justice, and sanctuaries. Uh, sanctuaries are places where confiscated animals are taken care of. Um, and so um, we have made some progress. We are providing more education about what, which ones are the protected species in Liberia. Um, we are creating more awareness about the wildlife law because when, even when you go to, to, the, to the people in court, to the magistrates, to the judges, they don't know this law very well. Um, and uh, a very recent activity that we started, but we believe it is very successful, is that we are started working with bushmeat uh, sellers. So mm. we started working with women who are selling bushmeat um, because you see it's another issue. I mean, very often these women it's not really their choice that they absolutely love selling bushmeat. It's just right. that this business, they have been doing it for years. And mm -hmm. so them to change is very difficult. But now we have a new scheme where we are uh, educating them about which ones are the species that are protected in Liberia, so they should not sell them. 
but actually when it goes strictly by the law all the bushmeat business in Liberia is uh, is illegal yeah just yeah. that they have not really started enforcing the law yet um so like to trying to do that with the is, business plan. It is not is not your your job to provide the alternative for them maybe it's the government if the mm -hmm. people are not selling bushmeat or you're not eating bush because i i stay in my area called dudu and i set traps for bushmeat as well yeah, what is yeah. The alternative that government is providing or what alternative do they have if they don't get yeah. bushmeat for food yeah Exactly. So you see, I mean, we, we totally understand that. Yeah. And we also know that this is not a process that can, or something that can stop from one day to the other. Um, so what we are doing right now is we are trying to uh, promote to be a little bit more strict um, in the areas where people do have alternatives. So the major bushmeat markets in Liberia are in Monrovia and Painesville. We did a bushmeat survey to understand which ones are the hotspot areas for uh, bushmeat trade, which ones are the species that are being traded most. Um, and so um, it's here where we start to reduce the market, where we give more education, where also more law enforcement is happening, and, but where we also start uh, educating the bushmeat women and we are trying to help them to do other business. Yeah? And interestingly, we started with 24 women and after two weeks, four of these women had already changed business. Yeah, just because they, they, they needed some education. We, you see, we are actually providing them with a monthly stipend for a certain period. Uh, so we are giving them $70 every month. We are doing education activities with them. They are helping to educate other people in the market. And, but slowly they are diverting to something else because if you are looking at the women who are doing it, they actually don't even like it. Yeah, it's dangerous. Uh, you see, you can get diseases uh, during Ebola, of course, the business was down. During Corona uh, lockdown, the business was down. It's risky. Sometimes they commission the meat with the hunters. The hunters don't come back and so on. So, you know, there actually uh, there are ways how we can give some support. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I totally agree that for uh, communities that are very remote, uh, close to the forest, of course, they need their protein source, right? And this is, they have been doing it for uh, hundreds of years. They have uh, eaten bushmeat. And this is something, of course, again, um, you'd see there are species that are not uh, threatened. Uh, there are species where it is less serious to uh, hunt them compared to others. So we are trying to educate at least which ones are the species that are really protected by international law. But again, we are also educating them about the fact that right now, all hunting in Liberia is illegal. Mm. But definitely other protein sources need to be provided. And this is why voting, mm. for example, the fish farming. Yeah, because this is something that gives protein to the, to the community. They can take their fish from the pond every day, but at the same time, they can sell it in the market and so on. So mm. more of such schemes are needed. Um, and this is what uh, conservation organizations are doing. But uh, of course, I, I, I agree to some extent, the government also is responsible. Yeah, you cannot deprive people from any protein without providing an alternative. Exactly. I agree with that. Exactly. In, you know, in, in, in Liberia, the, the chimpanzee, I don't know that's the difference, but we say bamboo, right? Baboon, yeah. Or you yeah. say bamboo. Yeah, we say bamboo. <laughs> so in, in Liberia, you hear things like a uh, market works bamboo draw, meaning yeah. that uh, the bamboo is a ruthless guy who will who will benefit from other people's effort. And uh, mm -hmm. you have songs like "You ugly bamboo with small," and uh, mm -hmm. when bamboo die. So this this kind of uh, saying do not really speak good of of the chimpanzee, right? Do, do you see well, those just... kind of reflected in the way people relate to chimp? In, in the wild? Not really, I think. I mean, obviously there are people who are just hunting them and who are eating them and they're taking the babies as pets. But um, I mean, I have not, I mean, uh, if a hunter is hunting, he's hunting uh, any animal. So he's not, he's not targeting not chimpanzee worse than other animals. So I think it doesn't matter if you have respect for, uh, for, for life, for the beauty of nature, or if you see it as a source of income. So I, I, I have not really come across this um, bad attitude towards chimpanzee, honestly. 
So when uh, when you tell talk to people about you know conserving these animals, what do you tell them about the benefits? Let's say chimpanzee, this species is, is mm -hmm. about to be extinct. Somebody yeah. living in uh, Dre will yeah. say so what? Yeah, exactly. So I think this is something that I did not really explain yet. Um, obviously, uh, the forest is an ecosystem, right? Uh, when we're talking about an ecosystem, it means we are talking about uh, something that is an entity where every piece, every plant, every animal has uh, a certain role, okay? And so, um, you know, the chimpanzees, uh, like other animals in the forest, they are actually helping to grow the forest. You know, they are helping to disperse the seeds. Uh, so some of the trees, they can't grow if uh, the seed has not been eaten by an animal. And so, um, yeah, I mean, every, every animal uh, has, a, has a job to do in the forest. And so only if all these animals are in the forest, the forest can stay healthy. That's the reality. So we are, we are talking about what kind of services uh, these animals are providing in the forest, how, how they are belonging in the forest. I mean, if you are if you want to tie it to a religion, of course, I mean, uh, if you are a Christian and you believe of course, you can also say, okay, God created all these uh, uh, these things. Uh, who are you to take it away? Um, so, I mean, there are different uh, techniques we can use, but, um, you know, I mean, I think especially people who have lived with the forest, uh, who, who know the forest dynamics, they actually understand that very well, especially those people who still um, are following like traditional ways of hunting more. You know, the old hunters, they know which animals they can hunt. They will not uh, kill a pregnant female of any species. Right. Mm. All right. Th so thank you. There is some, sens some sensitivity about that. Yeah, I, I, I can see that uh, when you're talking about killing the animals, you got a little emotional. You are attached to these animals. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's. I think it is a general respect for any... Uh, creation on earth, uh, yeah. whoever created it, however they came about, but it's a, a genuine respect for uh, the beauty of nature. And I mean, if you have ever been inside the forest and you have had the chance to, to see a wild animal, to observe it um, in the natural environment, yeah. it is something that is breathtaking. I mean, it is something you, you will never forget such a moment. Uh, and I mean, and telling this also in light of, of you know, ecotourism activities, because like, for example, you know, we, we also are like doing projects where we are habituating uh, monkeys or chimpanzees so that tourists can see them in the wild. And uh, it is an experience that um, you can't describe. Maybe not, you see, maybe not everyone will put the same value to it, but, but for someone who is somehow attached to nature, um, it is something... Um, Anyway, I mean, it is emotional, right? Uh, beauty of nature, or <laughs> beauty of nature is emotional. Maybe for, for someone else, it is a beautiful car. For me, it is, it is a beautiful forest. And um, yeah, it is just, uh, I don't know. Um, I just feel humbled. I feel it is an immense privilege to be allowed to be working in this, in this field to be allowed to have, have this experience um, yeah. is something that, you know, a normal person, normal European person would never experience. But uh, you, you see, for me, sleeping in the forest, having all the sound of the forest, feeling the freedom and the peace you have in nature, it's something I would never change with any city in the world. Yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> in my village, they will say, Borrow me your eyes because as you describe that, I just want to be in your place. Let me read a few comments so we can draw down the curtains. There are yeah. some people watching, they are making some comments. Jacob Tuese, Ranger S. Martin, Princess Yomi, Kontia, we welcome to it. Uh, he said, Let's protect the forest landscape in Liberia for prosperity. Kudos, Dr. Hillers. Uh, Benedict Phillips said, I have a monkey in that forest. His name is Pape. I hope he is still there. Dr. Hiller, do you see Liberia has a safari attraction besides science and research? We're talking about ecotourism. Uh, 
Jackie Saya said, where is Eugene Fagon? That's the Deputy Information Minister. Please call him to come and learn about tourism potential. Jerome Gilman said, you have a positive view of our country than Liberians themselves. Those with the negative views have no idea and have never visited. Jerome is trying to uh, introduce some. Uh, Jackie said, how dangerous is your work? Mook approaches are ruthless. And uh, she also say, is the wildlife department incorporating conservation studies in the schools? Do you do outreach at schools? Thank you for your work and your love for animals. Those are the few comments. Your response okay. and questions. Okay, there was one comment um, about the uh, ecotourism potential um, besides research and science. So um, indeed, I mean, there is, is potential for that. And so I just described, I mean, okay, of course you need to see that uh, Liberia is not, we are not talking about big savanna where people can go on safari like in Kenya or South Africa. It is a different thing. And this is why you need to mix it a little bit with the cultural aspects. Um, but uh, going to the rainforest, uh, it is a unique experience. And um, so I just explained briefly that uh, there are some ways how we, for example, we can habituate monkey groups, okay? So we can make monkeys being um, used to people. And so these are like tourist sites where you could bring people. Uh, and this is something that we are also having in mind. And you see in, in other countries like in Rwanda or Uganda, people are paying a lot of money to see uh, the gorillas, to see the chimpanzees and so on. And in the Thai National Park, we also have one area in Kutivawi where people can see chimpanzees in the wild. So you see there, I mean, there are some things that people can see, okay? But of course, it is clear that it's not, not like uh, driving around in the car and, and seeing animals all over the place. Yeah, it is a different experience, but uh, I would not say that it's not something that is uh, not interesting to people, yeah? Uh, you just need to see how you promote it. Hmm. Um, there was another question, how dangerous is the work? Yeah, because uh, you're going okay. in the forest and some of those people yeah. with the illegal activities and all that. Uh, okay, well, okay, I mean, okay, right now you see, now I'm the country director, so I'm sitting in the office most of the time, which is very boring, yeah, <laughs> but um, in all those years that I have worked in the forest, um, I never felt threatened in the forest. I mean, maybe the only thing is if there is like a th storm and, and, and branches can fall down or whatever, yeah, but um, Honestly, um, I mean, I, I don't know. Some people are scared of snakes or whatsoever, but uh, or they, they ask about the animals, but the animals, they are more scared of us than we are scared of them. So they, they will just escape. So I don't, I don't see any danger in working in the forest. I'm, 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 I'm not at all. Even with, hmm? with lepers, you're still not scared of them? Well, but they will not come to eat me. I mean, it's not... <laughs> It's not it's not it's not like the leopard is waiting for all the people i mean they are scared of us too right they will i think they'll choose another another prey compared to, to people coming inside the forest uh, if there is any issue with any wildlife in the forest it is an exceptional uh, situation um but honestly i mean in all those years i have not heard about any particular accident with wildlife inside the forest yeah it, it's a different business maybe there's an, uh, an animal coming out to the farm because the farm is too close to the forest or whatever. But anyway, I personally don't see any danger in the work in the forest because for me, it is the biggest pleasure on earth uh, being in the forest. It's more dangerous to drive on the, on the road to the airport here or whatever. So <laughs> um, yeah, I don't see any danger in that. Um, okay, there was one question about uh, wildlife education in schools. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I briefly mentioned that we do have wildlife clubs in schools. Um, so we, we are selecting, I mean, we're working with boys and girls. We are doing programs with them. Uh, and interestingly, uh, I mean, so we're explaining to them what is the role of the animals, why it's important to protect them, why it is important to keep the forest healthy. And uh, we did have already some, some parents complaining that their children are refusing to eat bushmeat. And so, you know, it is, it is nice because the children are educating their parents. Yeah? And, and, and we have seen that in other areas too. So 
you know, it is really important to involve, include the children in the education um, because they are the future generation. And the sooner you start with this uh, type of education and the sooner they also are in contact with some of these, um, this knowledge, um, it is really helpful. Mm. And I know that other, co organ other conservation organizations are doing similar programs. So let, let's conclude with this uh, about what you see on the horizon few years ahead of you, what do you intend to do in those forests? I know you already said there's one other forest being uh, in the pipeline to be created. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. also, uh, what was the next thing I was going to ask? Yeah, that answer that. <laughs> yeah, about, about that potential and yeah. yeah. What, what, so, are, what are some of the things, what can all of us do because you have librarians in the diaspora, you have the government, you have people in Liberia, you have other partners. What do you want all of us to do to support what you are doing in the forest? Okay, so, um, I mean, yeah, you um, mentioned it already. Um, I mean, and I also said it, so there are more areas that are earmarked for protection in Liberia uh, to fulfill the government's commitment to protect 30% of the remaining forests. And currently, uh, the White Chimpanzee Foundation, together with the Forestry, Forestry Development Authority, has started to work in one other area, which is called Kran Basa, um, which potentially will become the largest national park in Liberia. And I mean, it is, it is, the wildlife and the biodiversity there is amazing. Um, so that is something that hopefully will happen within the next couple of years. Uh, there are more areas to be gazetted. Um, so um, forestry development and conservation partners are working towards that, but of course, always ensuring that communities around those areas are receiving the benefits. Um, and this is one thing where it's really, we, we need more funding. Yeah, I mean, you, so you see right now, um, because of Corona also, it is not so easy to find funding right now because some of the organizations even or donors have even diverted um, their funds a little bit because of Corona. And so um, it is really our um, biggest wish to find more funding so that we can bring more benefits, uh, more livelihood projects to the communities, um, more education to the communities and also more infrastructure. Um, you see, if I had the money, I would uh, ensure that every community really has safe drinking water in all the areas, because for me, this is like priority number one. Um, now, of course, um, it is difficult to predict where Liberia is going. Um, I mean, this, um, well, I don't want to get into politics. Yeah, mm. it is, um, we, I mean, the government, knows what, what their priorities are. Um, just let's hope that are, the priorities remain in line with uh, what is uh, outlined in the law, what is uh, not um, contradicting the currently good reputation when it comes to natural resource management in Liberia. Um, so yeah, we just hope that the government will remain supportive of uh, conservation activities because for us, conservation activities also really means bringing benefit to local communities. Um, and um, when it comes to what all of us can do, um, it is true, yeah, often, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a say, the same for me. When I explain, okay, I'm, I'm living in Liberia, it is true, um, people may still think about Ebola, of course, they may think about um, the, the war, um, well, I mean, you know, I think it is just really good for people to understand that um, there is some something else about Liberia and Liberia's biggest treasure is like is the forest. It is the forest, it is the wildlife, it is the biodiversity. It is what makes Liberia unique in the whole world. Um, other countries have uh, have iron or have bauxite uh, but um, not, not <laughs> the other countries don't have the wildlife and don't have the biodiversity that Liberia has. Um, Liberia has a unique mixture of forests, of beaches, uh, of rivers, of, of, of mountains. Um, it is something that really can be discovered. And so I would encourage you know, people who are in diaspora who may come back to visit, maybe just don't, don't only stay in Monrovia, you know, take the time to go 
uh, and there are places you can see that are not too far from uh, from Monrovia. Um, you know, you you can go to Lake Piso, you can go to Gola. Um, if you have more time, there are other places you can see. But try to get out and uh, try to see um, nature as an asset. Uh, yeah. You see, sometimes this is also something that. Um, maybe is has a different mentality. You see, I, I grew up in the. I mean, I grew up in a small village in, in in the Black Forest in Germany, and I was outside in nature all the time. I mean, for us, uh, having a green garden is beautiful. But here, sometimes people will just put 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 the cement and will think that this is beautiful. And so, I mean, just just try to see to get out to nature and see how it makes you feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because actually nature is beautiful and especially in Liberia. It is. You have a Labrador name yet or not yet? Poye. What's your Labrador name? I have, I have a Quran name, Poye, which oh, means blessing. Blessing, Poye? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much, Poye. We really, really appreciate mm -hmm. your time. And then thank you, Wanda, your final thoughts, and then we can close the broadcast. I just want to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, um, you know, also to, to allow me to um, express how I personally feel. Uh, because you see, sometimes people, they only think uh, we are here because we are making big money or whatsoever, but that is not really the case. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be here if I, this was my, my, my priority. And, um, you know, sometimes people, are so so much focused on the work they, they forget about um, the passion about the fun and um, yeah I just uh, want to encourage everything enjoy what you are doing enjoy helping to protect Liberia's wildlife and forest and um, spread the word uh, that Liberia's nature is beautiful. Thank you so much we can't thank you enough for coming to the program and expressing and just letting us know, providing this education and the kind of work you do in Liberia. Uh, I went on the website when I saw the video, you know, about the crown and I, I'm going to miss it again. Gribble Crown. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Gribble <laughs> Crown Park. And I went on the website and contacted and I was able to get in contact with you. And since then, the communication has been very, very uh, frequent so that we can have this show today. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the people that are working with you, not only to uh, conserve the uh, forest in Liberia, the species, but also making our lives better. Because as you said, echo, you know, is the ecosystem. We are all, it's all related. What you do, it comes back to you. You breathe out the uh, carbon dioxide, plants take that and give you back oxygen. So if these things are there, we live better. We will appreciate your work and thank you so much uh, for doing what you what you do. Until Can then, I just I say one last thing? Sure. Okay, I just want to thank uh, my amazing team, uh, the WCF family and all the community members who are working with us and all our conservation partners and people in the FDE. And um, please let us continue to work together in good faith because we are all doing an amazing and important job. And um, thank you for that. Thank you. And I want to tell the uh, Grand Jire County Association in the Americas, you have your crown sister right here. Poye is with me here. So <laughs> do all you can to support what she's doing. And also visit the website. And uh, I think we can pin that. Visit the website and see what you can do. And uh, say hi to Poye in crown. Thank you so much. We want to thank all our okay. viewers who contributed. We want to say thank you for watching us. Keep your dial set here at Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Until then, on behalf of all of us here at Focus on Liberia, we say thank you, good night, and God bless you. We will leave you with the song, our usual song that says, we are all Liberians. Bye-bye for now. Okay. We are Liberians. Liberia is our home.
Yeah, well, well.